Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's tutorial is going to be focused on a server banner. Now this banner is a rather simple one. As you can see, there's just a few different colors, a few different shapes. And other than that, it's really bare bones. Now there is a lot of customization involved with this banner and lots of different ways you can style it to fit your own needs. And I'll go over those in just a second. But first, I wanted to give you an idea of how it would actually look if you upload it to your server. So there is that. As you can see, it's a great way to feature a certain character. So say you have a mascot for your server and you want them to appear there. Or let's say your server is focused around a game such as Ghost of Tsushima. Then you can put the main character there and have the rest of the image be color focused around that character himself. So maybe shades of black and dark blue. Now in regards to customization, if we go into miscellaneous shapes here, you can see we do have these dotted rectangles going all the way around. But we can also come in and bring in some of these. Now it does not look good with the current matchup. Let's say I hide a couple rectangles and then I drag in these waves over here. It can then start to look pretty decent. Though of course you have to make further adjustments to make sure these X's and such don't interfere with the way the waves are going. So overall what this design is focused on is customization and bare bones elements so anybody can make it. Now I will of course show you how to make these waves and I'll do that at the end of the video. So the bulk of it is going to be focused on just these elements right here. So without further delay, let's get right into the tutorial. We're going to start off by going to File, New, and have our width at 960, and then our height at 540. Click Create. Now as usual, we're going to delete this background layer. So create a new layer, click in the plus, go to the background, either right click, delete layer, or click the delete key on your keyboard. Then come over to your paint bucket tool or select G on your keyboard. Come over to your color picker and we'll be using the following color, FF6658. Click OK, drop that down. Now we're gonna go ahead and name this the base. I double clicked on the layer one to edit the name. Then Control G, we'll call this the background area. Let's give this the orange color. Right click on this base, blending options. Come over to a pattern overlay and we'll be using 15, zero, and then 245. But feel free to adjust this as you feel necessary. And I will have this pattern link available for download in the description as always. So we'll go ahead and collapse that, close that, and we can drag in our character model. In this case, I have everything focused around the character in terms of color, which is why everything is red. But for your case, you might not use red, you might use blue, green, etc., depending on the character model that you chose. So there we go. I'll make sure she is properly sized and then centered. That's good. Now I'm going to right click, blending options. Drop shadow, make sure we're on black, 39, 12, 2, and 6. Close that and name this the model. And we can go ahead and give this the red color. Next, we're going to go back to this background area, delete this extra layer. We go to this background area, create a new layer, come over to our ellipse tool or click U. And I'm holding down, by the way, on this left side. So holding down the left arrow key, sorry, with the left mouse button, and it pops up options here on the side. And for the color, we'll be using the following, FF4739. Click OK. Now make sure you are still on the ellipse tool, and just start dragging like so. Now I have stroke on, I do not want that. I want to be using the color we just selected, and with that color picked, we're going to go ahead and drag this till it's about 
Actually, she is too far up. Let's go ahead and knock her down a tad. There we go. And I'm, I'm using the move tool, and then I use my arrow keys on my keyboard to move it by one pixel at a time. So the ellipse, let's move it down a tad. We don't want to be too far up. And I would say this is a good spot. Now we're going to right click, rasterize layer, go to our rectangular marquee tool, highlight over everything that's past her on the left, and delete because we only want the right side of this ellipse showing. Now we'll do control G and call this the right circle. Now create a new layer, do control G, call this the left circle, go to that layer within the group, go to your color, make it white, five F's, go to your ellipse tool, hold shift as you drag, and make sure it is on fill, not stroke. And then position it sort of like that, though so a tad larger. Now we can call this the base and this the base, just so we're oriented when we actually go to edit. Now we're gonna return to this right circle, the base layer, do control J, move that below. We'll call this the white background. We're going to right click, blending options, color overlay, make this straight white, click OK, click OK. Come to your move tool and move it across till it's about there. Then come to your arrow keys and click down until you can see it just vanishing at the top. Now it is a bit too wide on the side, so we are gonna move it a bit more to the left using our arrow keys and about here is a good position. Now since we did move it left, click it up a tad until you can see it just barely showing at the top. And that is perfect. So right click, rasterize layer style, that's the white background. Now come over to the lines that was included with the download of this file. We drag them in, we're gonna right click, blending options, color overlay, and the color we're going to use for these is the same exact color that we used for the backgrounds. So let's select that color, click OK, click OK, make sure it is clipped on, and we'll call this the lines. You can go ahead and scale these down just a tad, and that is perfect. Now we're going to come back to this left circle do control J, move that below, we'll call this the red stroke, and we're going to do a similar thing as we do with the other side. Actually, I don't need that because since it's still considered a shape, we can just swap right to that red. Now we'll do a similar move as with that side. So once again, it vanishes near the top and it protrudes out on the side just like that. We will now return to these lines down here, do control J, drag them up, clip them onto the red stroke, drag them over, and make sure they are aligned near vertical. That looks good. Now right click, blending options, color overlay, and we will be using the following color, E24432. Click OK and then OK one more time. And I will adjust this over just a tad using my arrow keys, just like so. So with each of these edges out of the way, I'm gonna grab these dots, drag those dots in, do Control T, let's resize them until they fit like so, maybe a bit less, there we go. We're gonna clip these on to the base, make sure they're actually on the right side. Clip that onto the base, we'll call this dots. We're gonna put this at hard mix and bring the opacity down to 60%. Now we'll do control J and bring these over to the left side and we'll do something somewhat similar there. 
We're first gonna clear the layer style, right click, go to blending options, color overlay, and once again, we'll be using the same color as we used for the backgrounds. Click OK, and then once more time, right click, rash has their style, and then we are simply going to drop the opacity. All right, and we are actually almost done with the, the only step left would be to add in those shapes. So let's go ahead and do that. So once again, come over to this left side and hold down with your left mouse button, click on the rectangle tool, make sure you have a dotted stroke at three pixels. Now let's go back to the right circle, create a new layer, do control G, call this miscellaneous shapes, and we will drag a few across. So let's put one here, control T, and let's organize it like that. And we'll do it, control J once again, control T. Let's drag this over to, let's say, there, let's make it a bit larger. And then one more time, control J, control T, move this to the center. Just like that. And then you can adjust these around if you aren't happy with how I position them. Now we'll take this same thing and go over to the left circle, create a new layer, do control G. And as for the coloring of the dots, we will be using the same dark red from the backgrounds of this right circle. So come over to your rectangle tool, make sure the stroke is that color, then hold shift as you create the shape. And then just adjust this shape around. So we'll put one right there, control J, control T. We will make this a bit bigger and put one right there and control J, control T. The last one can go just like so. Great. So these two circles are technically done, but once again, if you want adjustments, feel free to make them. This is a highly customizable design. Let's collapse all of this and come over to our base. We'll first do Control G and start making our X shapes. So we'll call this the X shape. We'll come over to our actual X. We'll drag that in. Now, of course, you can make your own X if you really wanted to, but it's much easier to use this pre-made asset to do so. Now, right click, blending options, color overlay, and we'll use straight white. Right click, rasterize layer style, control T. Let's resize this down a bit. Click okay. Now let's delete that extra layer. We'll just call this one. Then go into blending options, drop shadow, blend mode, normal, spread zero, size zero, distance about there. Though we might adjust it, we'll check in a second. Opacity all the way up, and the color will be the following, FFC6AA. Click OK, click OK. Now do Control J, hide this first one, we'll use it as a backup. Right click, rasterize layer style, let's scale this down. And that was actually perfect with the size of the drop shadow, because when you scale down it's going to look smaller. So when you initially make it, it's good to have a backup just in case it wasn't properly sized out. But this one looks great. So we can start duplicating this around. So let's put one right there. And keep in mind, I'm using Control J and Control T for all of this. Or you can hold Alt and create a copy like that, whichever you find quicker. I'll repeat that one more time. You can either do Control J and drag it across or hold Alt, and then just drag, and it's gonna create copies of all of these. It's just whichever shortcut you are more comfortable with using. I'm gonna stick to Control J, Control T, because that's what I'm, I'm familiar with. But again, 
up to you how you want to approach that. Let's put one over there, Control J, Control T. I'll put one down here. Then Control J, Control T. This last one will be very tiny. Just go right there. Go ahead and group that. We'll call this the left. We'll return to this initial layer. Control J, show it, right click, Rash has layer style, Control T, go to the width and flip that. Now let's drag it over, Control G, we'll call this the right. Then Control T, we will adjust this down to about there. So put one here, Control J, Control T, we will move one down here. Control J, Control T. We can move one over to there and then Control J, Control T. Put one last one, super tiny, right there. Now on to the final step, we'll create a new layer, Control G, we'll call this the miscellaneous shapes. Once again, we shall return to our plain white and our rectangle tool. Make sure the stroke is white and then we will just drop it down just like that. Then we'll do Control T and let's say one up here. Then Control J, Control T. Let's put one right down there. Then we'll do Control J, Control T. We shall move one over to here. Let's actually move it out a bit more. And then one more time, Control J, Control T, right up here. And then that would mark the official ends for this design. I'm going to show you how to save it real quick, and then I'll wrap up the end of the video with showing you how to make those squiggly lines. Let's go ahead and collapse all of this. Then we can either go File, Save As, and choose PNG, or File, Export, Save for Web. This will probably be your best bet for this style, just because the score requires smaller file sizes. Actually, I'm not 100% certain on that, but it will upload easier if the file size is smaller, and it doesn't remove any noticeable amount of quality when you have a compress like Safer Web does. So, with that out of the way, I'm going to show you how to make those squiggly lines real quick. We're going to go over to our rectangle tool, put this at 4 pixels. Switch this to a solid line, then we will drop it down like so. Now right click, rasterize layer, come up and delete all the way to the top. Click delete. Now we'll go to filter, distort, wave. From here we'll do the following settings, 1, 10, 71, 1, 10. As you can see, it creates a fairly decent line. Now you can adjust that if you want a longer line or you want them to have taller or shorter wave amplitudes. But other than that, it is fairly simple. Thank you so much for watching. I'll have all the assets you need available for download in the description as always. And another video will be popping up on screen soon to another great tutorial.